<coughs> okay I'm gonna try to show about the details of this Taiwanese flute which doesn't have pins and with any degree of, of uh, technical or success I want to show you the intricate part about this flute how the right and the left hand are made uh, using diff very different structure. Um, normally, um, okay. Normally, the F sharp post. This is what I call the F sharp. It's also called the king post here. Is the F sharp key? Um, the steel for the right hand has a bearing inside the post and the steel for the left hand has a bearing inside the post. But this thing, the left hand steel goes all the way from the top of the C-sharp key all the way down to that point and it screws in. And as it's screwed in, a pin protrudes from the other side over here and I'll back it out and show you that that is supposed to be the hinge uh, pin for the left hand keys it's just a little hard to do this with the camera in front of me so that's now just started in it started on its way in to the end of that steel for the right hand keys. So as I tighten the left hand section screw, now it's creating a bearing inside here, inside the end of the steel for the right hand keys. And that's a very distinctly different design from anything I've seen on any other flutes. And this long steel here <laughs> has um, the left hand section uh, made with a bridge instead of pins. So you see the B flat key is bridged around the A key and that's the way it gets its motion from the F key. So to take and this flute apart and put it together really requires a lot of patience and uh, understanding of the problem because the trill key is like many of the, the flutes that don't have pins the trill key is always in your way <laughs> so you have to kind of do this with the trill key in place but not screwed in and that's the that's the trick for working on this flute so I'll take the close-up lens off now you can see a little better what this looks like I hope I'm going to put the trill key, just keep it, keep it there without screwing in the pivot screws while I work on putting this thing together. And that way it's easy to get the trill key out of the way when you need it out of the way and put things on in order. So we're not going to put any of the uh, springs on. We're just going to try to get the parts in place before we do the assembly. So here's the C-sharp key first. And have to put the B flat kicker underneath here and the B, the, the B flat kicker underneath here. It's a clearance. Let's 
it's only allowed when you don't have the troll keys assembled tight. And then you put the A key in place. Put this thing back. And as I'm tightening the steel for the left hand keys, I've got my hands on up here on the end of the right hand section. And I'm feeling for that point to come in. Now it's just starting to go in and it's now it's tight. So that is the most important and critical thing about dealing with these flutes, Taiwanese flutes. And uh, it's the only one I've seen like this. Okay, aside from that, um, you know, you don't have to have the B-flat key off to get things accomplished. Or the G keys or the G-sharp key, you can do all that easily. Um, and then hook up the springs. Hooking up the springs isn't that hard either. Just get them in behind where they go. So we'll operate the keys. Okay. Everybody's working. And back in order. So now that we've got the flute together, I'll do a disassembly first, next. And I turn that off. First thing we're going to do is just loosen the pivot screws for the troll keys and take the springs off so that you can maneuver this and get it out of your way. Then remove this long steel. comes off and this comes off with some difficulty so the other peculiar thing about these flutes is no pins you use a set screw and this is a one millimeter and it's actually just slightly smaller slightly smaller than one millimeter about 0.89 millimeters well, i guess that's normal i don't know just like any hex allen screw, set screw, you put the 
end of it in here on the short end and fight with it until you get it loose. Obnoxious little buggers. Usually the short end is the only way to do this. Come on, get in there. There. They're really hard to move. I am recording a video. So that's where the screw is, right in there. You can see that without the magnifier on. And they put flats on the steel. See that flat there? They machine a flat surface so that the pivot screw sits tight on here. Um, if it didn't, if you didn't have a flat, if you tried to tighten the set screw against the shaft, it would bind everything you tried to assemble over there. It would put a big burr on that piece of steel and you wouldn't be able to move anything over it without wrecking the inside. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can put this magnifier back on again. Come on now. kind of down into the lug key here and once again trying to get these things lined up on there we go well that was not too tight yeah Boy, this one doesn't have flats for the pivots for this lug. See those dots on there? That is a problem. Because when you try to pull anything over there, it's going to bind up on that thing. And it's going to wreck the inside. So before you do that, they haven't put a flat on here. Get in there with a fine file. This is a number six. There, it comes off easily without making a damage. So normally this is permanently pinned, the F sharp key. We're not gonna take that off. We're just gonna leave that on. We don't need to take it off. Unless you wanna be real fastidious about it. So, taking the rest of the fluid is easy. Taking it apart is easy. Um, so I think putting it back together, it's just a matter of basically doing the same thing in reverse. So, uh, 
don't put the springs on until it's all together. And before you take it apart, unhook the springs first before you take it apart. Because the springs are just going to make more trouble than it's worth. Okay.